name is Candice, aka Picasso Baby, and today I'm going to show you how to wind down. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here before, thank you so much for stopping back by to paint with me today. So I know, I know if you are a subscriber, if you've been here before, you know that it's been a while since we painted together. And that's why today we're gonna be winding down together. So I got a suggestion for a painting. I had a painting of a wine glass in the back of one of my previous videos. So I decided since summer has winded down and I wanna take some time and wind down with you all, we're gonna be painting some wine today. And if you're 21 and up, make sure you grab yourself a glass of wine. So, before we get started, as always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on those post notifications so that you do not miss the next tutorial. And I'm going to quickly go over everything that we're going to be using for today's tutorial. So as always, I am using a 16 by 20 inch canvas. You can use the canvas size of your choice. It's completely up to you. We are going to be doing some drawing today. So you want to make sure you grab yourself a pencil or a Sharpie or both. That way you can do it in pencil first and then do it in Sharpie so that you have a nice outline to use throughout the painting. I'm also working with acrylic paint and I am using the colors Mars Black, Phthalo Blue, Burnt Sienna, I'm using titanium white, chrome yellow, and bright red. You also want to make sure you grab yourself a water cup for your brushes filled with cold water, some napkins, or a rag to dry your brushes off on. And then you also want to make sure you have some different size acrylic brushes. And as always, everything that I am using is in the description below, and it is linked to the different places that I purchase them from so that you can purchase them and paint along with me. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so like I said, we are gonna be doing some drawing today. So you wanna make sure you grab yourself a pencil and a Sharpie, or you can just use a Sharpie or the pencil is completely up to you. But I do already have mine drawn out, but I am gonna draw it in Sharpie. That way you all can see it really well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start to sketch out my wine glass. And then we're gonna have some more sips and do a little talking. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to get uh, my hand sketched out first because I'm gonna base my wine glass on that. So what I want you to do first, you're just gonna find um, any point at your on your canvas where you want your pinky finger to be. So I'm not going like at the midway point, it's a little bit behind, behind the midway point. And what I'm gonna do first, I am gonna make a line angled like that, so a small angled line. I am going to curve it down. I'm going to curve it back. And then I'm going to curve down. Now, as you're doing this part, keep in mind this is your pinky finger. So this is going to be the furthest uh, finger back. Everything else in front of it will be your other fingers and your wine glass. So again, you want to follow that shape first to get it started. Now from there, I'm going to make a little nail, so I'm going to come back to this line and I'm going to curve in to make a little nail. I also want to define my actual finger, so I'm going to do a quick curve here, another little curve there, and one more curve. Now once you have that I'm gonna go ahead and draw my wine glass because I can draw my wine, my wine glass based off of my pinky finger. So I am going to start by simply drawing a line that curves up a bit so it doesn't go straight up. If you do want yours to go straight up, that's completely up to you, but mine curves up just a bit. And then I'm gonna do almost like I'm making a U. I'm gonna come start by the end of the finger here and I'm gonna pull this line around almost like I'm making a U. Now that we have the glass, I'm gonna finish it off by pulling that curve between the top and a curve across the top for the lip of the glass. Now I wanna go back and finish the back of my hand before I add on my fingers and also the stem of my glass. So for the back of my hand, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start back here. So you see how the pinky finger comes down, 
curves over and then it starts to curve down right before it goes straight down I'm gonna do a curve here I'm gonna curve back into the glass and from there I'm gonna come down here and repeat this line here by simply pulling the curved line down there now we're gonna go back in and add some more fingers so the next finger I'm, I'm going to start on my pinky, but not right at the, at the bottom here where it stops. I'm going to move up just a bit. And I'm going up into my glass. Now I'm going to curve that up into my glass. And I'm going to stop it right there. I'm going to add a little nail right on the end there. And then I'm going to do the same way I curved back here curve from the back of the nail do a third curve I mean, I'm sorry do a second curve and then do a third curve going right back into the pinky finger now let's do that again this time I'm not going to start right on the finger here I'm going to actually come underneath it curve over and then curve up add my nail just making like a little raindrop or a little almond I'm going to come back in shape that one out a little more and then I'm gonna go and add those little curves to finish the finger so one little curve two pull a line in now the last finger I'm gonna add is gonna be over here so this one I'm gonna actually draw the nail first so a little See, I have a little space in between my nail, which I'm just doing like a stiletto or oval shape. You can do whatever shape nail you want. And then from the top of the nail, I'm going to pull a line back to the glass. And from the back of the nail or the up there, I'm going to curve over and back into the glass. So now it's like a little finger is there. I'm also going to go ahead and add my line for my wine. It's just a little curved line. You can do as much or as little wine as you like. Just remember the higher the line, the more wine you have. The lower the line, the less wine you have. Now I'm gonna go in and draw my stem. So I'm just coming from the bottom of the glass and curving a quick line down. I'm gonna mimic that line on this side. Curve a quick line down. I'm gonna close those lines up at the bottom with a little curve. And now for the foot of my glass, super, super simple. I'm just gonna make almost like a really wide oval or a really long oval rather. And now, once you have all of that on there, we're gonna go ahead and start to paint. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to get um, my background filled in. Now, I wanna get my background completely filled in with black first. If you're doing a different color, it's completely up to you, but I'm gonna do everything around my stencil with black. And I'm gonna be using my biggest brush, my big flat brush. If you would like to use a different brush or if you need to use a smaller brush to kind of outline it, feel free to use the brush of your choice. But I'm gonna go in with this brush and start to get everything in the background filled. And as we're working on filling this, let's catch up a bit. So it's been a few months since we painted together because you know, life be lifing. Um, but I was excited when I saw the request for this one because I'm like, oh, it's perfect. Um, because I also had a comment on one of my other videos. I can't remember who it was. So if you know this comment was yours, please let me know. Um, she was like, oh, you need to drink with us sometime. And even though in some previous videos, um, I have, you know, had drinks with you all if you're 21 and up. Um, I try not to do too many videos like that just because, you know, I don't ever want to get thrown off or distracted from really teaching you all some really fun and easy paintings. So I like to leave the drinking up to you all. Um, but I thought today was perfect for a nice little red wine because we're painting red wine or the color wine of your choice is going to be up to you of course um but yeah i thought today would be a great day to really just wind down with you all especially since the summer season is winding down we are officially into fall um i'm not sure about down south but if you are in the midwest you know we are experiencing our fall weather right now and I, i'm a fall girl i like fall weather i'm a summer baby 
but I love fall weather. So I'm excited for the fall weather to be here. Um, yeah, so, you know, again, work has been really, really busy, but I am so happy to be back painting with you all. So today, I am having a red wine. It's called, um, I believe it was like a sweet, sexy red or something like that from Cooper's Hawk Winery in Shore, Michigan. I went there for my cousin's bridal shower and ended up winning some games. One of my gifts was a bottle of wine from Cooper's Hawk. So if you've ever been there, this is like their sweet, sexy red, something like that. Um, but try it, definitely. If you haven't been there and you're in um, Michigan or if you're in an area that has a Cooper Hawk, definitely try it. I hear they have um, a wine tasting right now for like 12 bucks. So definitely try it. But yes, just wanted to catch up and wind down. So let's go ahead and finish up this back row and then we'll start on the next step together. All right, now once you have your entire background filled in um, and it's only your hand and your wine glass left, what we wanna do now is we wanna get the pieces of glass filled in. So not the part where um, there's going to actually be wine, but just the actual glass. We wanna fill those in with a slightly lighter shade of the background. So because my background is black, my shade is gonna be almost like a really, really dark gray. If you did a different color, you just wanna use your color with a little bit of white to lighten it up. That way when we paint it in, you can see the difference. Now one thing I'm gonna do before I do that, I'm switching to my like medium round brush. So it's not my smallest brush, but if you want your smallest brush, you definitely can use it. And I am going to fill in this little background piece here. So right where the pinky is, if you look right where your pinky is and then where your glass curves, there's almost like, or there should be a little triangle there between your pinky and the next finger there. There should be a little triangle. So I'm gonna fill that in. Now that I have that filled in, what I'm gonna do right on my plate, I am gonna take a little bit of white and mix it with some of the black because I just wanna make almost like a darker gray. And what, I can, what you can also do just so that you really can see it, I'm gonna go through and outline my glass with some white on my brush. So I didn't wash that black off or whatever color your background is, don't wash it off. But I'm gonna go through and outline, so not the actual wine part, but just the part where I'm gonna be filling in the glass. I'm gonna outline that with a little bit of white first. And it shouldn't be completely white because again, you should still have the color of your background on the brush. If you don't add some to it, that way it's just a lighter version of your background. And then I'm gonna go in again with this mixture I made of a little bit of white and my black. I'm gonna go in and just fill this in completely. And as you start to get to the center of the glass, you can start to pick up more of your background color. So you see I'm picking up more black so that the center of the glass is a bit darker. You just want the outline of the glass to be a little bit lighter so that you can see it um, on the background. So that next to the background, you can still see the outline. But if the center of your glass is the same color as your background, that's fine. Because we do want it to appear see-through, like glass. Now I'm gonna take a little more of my white and some of my black, and I'm gonna go down into my stem. For this part, because the stem is so small, I'm not gonna try to like outline it like I did the top of the glass. I'm just gonna go ahead and get it completely filled in with this white and black. And you see, it's just a bit of a darker gray and I'm just filling it in completely. Now that that's filled in, 
I want to go back and fill my wine in before I do anything to my hand. So I'm going to wash this brush out completely and dry it off. So you just want to wash that really, really good. And now, right on my plate, I'm doing a red wine. So I'm mixing up red and a little bit of black. If you wanted to do a white wine, you can mix up yellow with a little bit of white and a very, very small amount of brown just to give it more of like a gold color almost. Um, or you could just use the yellow by itself. It's completely up to you. But I am going to mix up, oh, got a little white there. But I'm gonna take some of my black and mix it with some of my red. Now, I don't want to mix a whole lot of it, a whole lot of black into my red because I don't want it super, super dark. I just want it more of like a lighter burgundy color. And once you get the shade you like, you're just going to go in and fill this in completely. This painting is super, super simple as far as like actually painting it. Once you get past the drawing part, filling this one in is like really, really simple. So it's a super fun one to do for like girls night on your own with your family. This, this is a super fun one. It, it can be for date night. It's super, super simple. You know, just, just not one that you can paint with the kids. And I'm just going to finish filling this in. And you can always, um, again, when you get next to the stencil, if you ever feel uncomfortable with a bigger brush and you want to switch to one of the smaller brushes or your smallest brush to really get next to it, feel free to do that so that it comes out really, really nicely. And now that the wine is filled in, I... I'm gonna have another sip of my wine and then we're gonna move right into the hand. That was more than a sip. <laughs> but what I'm gonna do for the hand, I wanna start at the back of the hand first um, because the back of the hand is gonna be my lightest part. So I am going to wash my brush really, really good and dry it off because I am still gonna be using this medium round brush that I was working with. And on my plate, as always, you have this brown as is, but the palm of our hand is always a bit lighter. So I wanna go in um, with a lighter brown. So I'm gonna mix up some white with a little bit of my brown. You don't want it super, super light unless you are on the lighter side. Um, then of course you add more white to get it as light as you need to but I'm just mixing almost like equal parts or maybe even um, a little more brown than white because I don't need it to be super, super light. And then I'm gonna go in and get the palm of my hand filled in. So everything behind the wine glass, I'm getting completely filled in. And one thing I like about these um, more so rounded brushes, especially like the medium sized ones, like um, number eights and tens, when you flatten it, it kind of just will create the curves for you. So I'm gonna go right next to my pinky finger. And then when I get here by my pinky finger, the line, that line that was there, I'm gonna follow that line all the way down and just fill that all in so you see how i left a little bit of the outside of the palm there so the actual top of the hand i left a little bit open so that we can fill that in with the skin tone and i'm not going to wash my brush what you can start to do for each finger and for the wrist here is you can fill it in with the color of your choice. So if you like the brown or the burnt sienna that you're working with as is, you can use it as is. If you want more of a caramel tone, you can mix brown, yellow, and a little bit of white. It's just a little bit different than um, what I had for my palm. So that's gonna give you more of a caramel tone 
if you want to go a little bit darker you can always mix up brown and a small amount of black so i'm taking some brown a little bit of black just gonna mix that in really well it's gonna give you almost like a more of a deeper kind of chocolate color when you go to mix that color make sure there's no white on your brush because sometimes it will give you more of a grayish brown than a true brown. So if you want more of a dark brown, you can use black and a, a little bit of black in some of your brown. You can use the brown as is, you can use brown, yellow, and white, or you can use um, you can use white and a little bit of brown if you need to make an even lighter tone. But once you decide what skin tone you're gonna do, all you wanna do is go ahead and start to fill in each of your fingers. So not the nails, but you want to get each finger completely filled in. And the wrist back here. And remember, if you need to switch to the smaller brush to get like a better outline or get closer to the nail, feel free to do so. All right, now, once you have um, everything filled in, at this point, the only thing that should still be open is your nails. Now, for the nails, I am going to use the smallest brush that I have, so a little teeny tiny round brush. Um, if you would like to use a different brush, remember, it's completely up to you. I am going to be filling my nails in simply with white. You know, you can never go wrong with a fresh white set. It's not just for the toes, ladies, okay? It's not just for the toes. So I'm just doing a white set. If you would like to fill your nails in with a different color, remember it's completely up to you, but you just wanna go ahead and start to fill in your nail color, and then we're gonna get ready for a quick break. All right, now, once you are finished with um, the nails, you have everything filled in, all we're gonna do before we can add anything else is we're gonna take a quick drying break. So remember, you can always grab a blow dryer and blow dry your painting on the cool setting, or you can give yourself about a 10 to 15 minute break to let it air dry during your break. Remember, you can always grab yourself some snacks or you can grab yourself your drink and then we'll start back together in just a few. Two moments later. So far, so good. Now we wanna go in and just touch up the details. So I'm gonna go in first by simply outlining my hand in black. I wanna outline it to really clean it up and make it pop some more. So what I'm gonna do, I am gonna go back to that smallest brush. And I'm just gonna be using a little bit of black paint. And if you did your background black like mine, um, then you're probably thinking, well, it's already on black. Why should I outline it? The outline, again, is just gonna simply clean it up. So, and it'll help you reshape things. So I'm just simply going through right here, outlining this. I'm gonna outline the nail and the finger. And you see how that kind of just pops more, it's a little more clean. So I'm gonna go through and do that to each finger and the hand. I am not going to outline the glass. If you did, um, a different color background like if you didn't do a black background then you can go ahead and outline your glass in black but because I did a black background I am not going to outline my glass in black I'm going to outline it in a different color in just a few
Now, again, if you have um, a different color background, you can go ahead and outline your um, glass in black as well. But because my glass is already on a black background, I'm gonna outline in white. I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm just gonna wipe some of that black off and I'm gonna go, on, go in and outline in white. Now, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna bring the lip of my glass back out. So you see where the two points are here? I'm not gonna curve over first, so I'm not gonna outline the top first. What I'm gonna do is curve a line in. So on the inside of the glass there, I'm gonna do a curve. Now, I'm gonna close the top off. And I'm just gonna simply go finish it up by outlining the entire glass. there even outlining the stem I'm not going to outline inside though I'm not going to outline like the top of my wine you want to leave the wine as is now once you finish outlining the glass what I want to do is I want to go in and jazz it up a bit add a little detail so I'm gonna add some, almost like the glare on a glass. The first place I'm gonna put it is just simply following this curve here, right on top of the wine. And then I'm gonna do a few lines right up here. So I'm just doing quick, two quick lines. Just to add a little glare, I'm gonna add some inside of the foot of the glass too. You can even add some inside the stem if you want. You just, wherever you put it, you just wanna follow the shape that's already there. Now, once you've done that, if you want to add any words to your painting, um, any extra details, if you want to go back and add some designs on the nails, anything at all, it's completely up to you. But once you are done, the last thing you want to make sure to do is simply sign your name or initials. And I'm just going to put mine right in the corner with a little bit of white paint and my smallest brush. And once you sign your name, you are all done with your painting. Thank you all so much for painting with me. I hope you have enjoyed our wine down and painting this super fun and simple wine glass. Um, and as always, if you would like to paint anything specific or you have any suggestions, leave them down in the comments below. And make sure you turn on those post notifications. Make sure you like, subscribe, and make sure you share these videos because we are almost at 10,000 subscribers. We're currently at about eight, almost 8,000. So let's get to 10,000 subscribers before the year is over. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and turn on those post notifications and I will see you in the next tutorial.